At the 2017 API conference, General Data was able to sit down with three of the top thought leaders in pathology informatics. We asked them to share their insights and experiences concerning barcode technology in the lab. We asked them to focus on three areas, the past, present, and future. This is what they had to say. There weren't solutions that would survive the overall processing so that you'd have an intact barcode from the beginning of the process to the end of the process. So it was as much a challenge to find materials and labeling solutions that would survive as it was to come up with a vision of what that tracking would look like. Without barcode and technology, mis-IDs were occurring far too frequently. Uh, in addition, you couldn't sometimes read what people were writing on the labels. So therefore, without barcode technology, it was very easy to misidentify patients. Slides were mislabeled, blocks were mislabeled. I would order stains on one set of slides and I would get slides which were, uh, had a different label on it. They were all linked to the LIS, but there was no way to track them. So we, this was something we found over, over several months and we wanted to find a way to you know, be able to track errors, be able to reduce errors. While it's not 100%, uh, I think that the value from a patient safety uh, issue alone is enough, I would expect within five years, it'll be 100%, per perhaps even required from a cap compliance perspective for safety. I think the adoption rate is actually extremely high. I recently asked an audience who did not have barcode technology and not one person raised their hand. The adoption rate uh, is, uh, has increased significantly in the last decade. Uh, when we first started using barcoding and tracking, I think we couldn't find any vendor out there who actually had a solution. Several labs were just starting to think about barcoding and tracking. So it, it has increased in adoption, especially after some the studies have shown that these error rates are not insignificant and they can cause impact patient safety. I guess I'd say I'm, I'm very pleased and certainly there's always room for improvement, but AP has come around and has become a largely automated specialty. I expected there to be slower adoption, but the LIS vendors having stepped up to the plate and their ability to generate barcode labeled assets has really made the adoption curve much easier for most people. The adoption rate is uh, more than I expected now. When I, when I started my current job two years ago, the lab was just starting to think about barcoding and, and they've been looked, looking at technologies. Uh, there are a number of anecdotes that are all, uh, I think, very powerful. For me, it was, it was the daily ritual that we had at MGH of little piles of cassettes on, on little mountains of cassettes in larger cases on pink sheets that would be staged in various benches along the back of the histology lab. And these were the, the problem children, the problem cases where something didn't quite add up, the slides didn't add up, there was a missing block. Where's block O? Well, you have, and that was found the day after the case was signed out because there was no slide out. So the, if it's, is, it, is it a matter that the, the block is missing? The block never existed. We don't know. And without tracking, these individual questions turned into little mountains of assets that required individual adjudication. And these cumulatively represented dozens and dozens of hours of work. And for me, what, what's amazing is to see that process now largely gone for most laboratories. It's wonderful. The impact is clearly most, most noticeable in histology, where efficiency has improved by 1,600 to 2,000 percent. So the impact has been in the processing of the lab tissue, you know, processing in the histology lab, processing in the cytology lab. It hasn't, uh, the errors have not reduced as much in the pre-analytical space and the post-analytical space, which is when Slides are sent to the pathologist and then they're sent out for uh, consults and other things. I think laboratories of the future will have much more uh, implementation of the so-called pod or single piece workflow models in which it's almost, I never want to say impossible, but almost impossible to lose something because things track in a linear fashion through the overall evolution of their processing. And if you think, for example, using again anatomic pathology as an example, it really is a production floor. It's a factory. You have 
raw materials going in and refined materials and information going out. When you apply lean methods and production pipeline concepts to that manufacturing process, the process A can be tightened up so first time quality is elevated. And at the same time, the overall rate of error loss hopefully can be driven down as close to zero as possible. A lab of the future would clearly have far more automation and movement assist than we have in the current lab. Right now, there's far too much of people having to walk around, move things, deliver them by hand. If you look at the way industry works, if you look at the way that automobile plants work, we move the assets to the person. And so to me, that's the laboratory of the future. Yeah, so the, the lab of the future, or the next generation lab, will be uh, more automated, will have more facilities for a streamlined workflow, more lean processing, more digital pathology, more molecular pathology, and, and seamless integration, where the, as the patient specimen flows through the lab, the tests that we do become available in an integrated report for the pathologist, for the patients, for the oncologists, for the treatment team. So more standardized workflow, more structured data, and a seamless operation with integration of all, all types of data.